Math modeling is the process of solving real world problems. In fact, we do it without even thinking about it almost every day. I want to show you how I introduce students to the concept of modeling. Even though I regularly teach college students, you'll see how easy it is to bring these methods into your high school classroom. When I start my modeling class, I'd rather just, I want people to jump in. And I feel like when you do modeling, you're not necessarily jumping into the deep end. I describe it as jumping into that, it's not the shallow end because you don't want to get hurt, right? <laughs> but it's, it's sort of like that middle end where you can jump in with your feet and you're safe and you're going to land. You're going to solve something. You're going to get somewhere, right? It's going to be a success. Take a look at this question. And without me saying anything else, I'd love you to take a look at it and just see how you'll travel to each one of these destinations. So in just a few minutes, I am going to invite a few teams to come up here and share where they are this, at this point in time. All right, so what's the cost for the different ways of going to Chicago? I don't want to monetize an exact amount, but we can put them on a scale. It depends on if you're going to sit in a coach seat or if you're going to ride a bunk comfort. If cost was your biggest concern, this is what you should choose. We're going to ask a few of you to uh, give a little quick report on what you've been doing in terms of maybe some brainstorming. So we first talked about assumptions and brainstormed about all the things that might affect why we choose what we choose in terms of our travel choices. Which of those things would you want to investigate more immediately? Do you think in your group as you're because now you have you have some brainstorm some ideas but you need what do you need next we took it from the students perspective what kind of yeah. travel would they care about one of the things we mentioned is for one person a, a trip that takes a long time might be more of an issue and they'd be willing to pay more to be able to get there more quickly there's a lot of time and cost what did i miss on my list right here that you guys have in your groups i know i missed some things weather size of party i'll put the anxiety in there I also put like work while I'm doing it. Does that sound good? So we could focus the problem statement with the idea that later on we could modify that perhaps. So with this problem, did anyone think, well, there's not much to it, right? I can go online, I can find my flyer drive calculator. It must be done because I can just plug it into a calculator. I don't know, you might have a student who just pulls that up on their phone, right? Or, or on their tablet or something. Um, but of course, everyone here has said things way more than just time and cost. So we've far exceeded these things. You guys came up with this, like the, right, people talked about anxieties. Here's, um, you know, flying's the safest, apparently. At least that's what the Flying Bureau says, whatever West Line is. <laughs> so I truly trust that data, right? And then there's all this other stuff too, right? It says the debate's settled. It's done. You don't have to worry about it. Don't model it because we know that flying is more efficient than driving. As you know, the table back there, they were interested in that. That was some you know, carbon emissions. Or um, this person just says, you know, flying's a pain. I mean, that's their number four thing on their list of reasons. <laughs> Why you can't do it. And right, so people, you agree, that could be the thing. People say there's answers, but it certainly depends, doesn't it? It depends on all these things that we're talking about. So see what you can get now. now Try to solve the question. And once again, maybe you even have to define what that question is that you're solving. Certainly a rental car adds an additional cost. But if you're driving, then you already have the transportation. Right? But if there's public transportation, which there are in most of the big cities, then you might, you might be able to avoid that. And once you get to your hotel, you're, you're done, even if you're not in a city. It's a so you're on a... It's super slow and it takes longer than the car and only goes once a day. If you're doing the longer trip, you've got meals. Get out of here. One, 522 dollars. That cannot be. I'm going to ask you guys to start, you know, to report out once again. And in this time, what we're going to do um, is have every group address these four questions. The first one is, what's the specific problem your model is going to solve? Someone else in your group might work on three important considerations you need to make in order to find a solution. The third one is, what's your solution? So do you have a solution right now? How does your model work? Explain the math that you are using or expect to use, because you might even have a few models that you've developed. One that might be back of the envelope. You've sort of gotten something working. And then also this idea for, here's what's going to happen. So this might be a two-parter. The user, whoever's asking the question, needs to say, is this business or personal? But oftentimes, what students will want to do is to look for a single solution for 
that contains everything. When in fact it might be that there are distinct solutions depending upon what's important, business or, or, or pleasure. Is it taking your family or a group of students? I feel like what we said was personal or business is like the way we're going to parse it and then we would allow whoever's using the model to choose their most valuable like thing. If you want non-stop versus connecting, right? And connecting um, is and, cheaper. And <laughs> connecting is cheaper. But to me the model has to be some, what, what, you, what we were saying over here at the end that what we need a like a we need an optimization kind of thing. In other words, from one to ten, how much is cost important to you? From one to ten, how much is time important to you, and so forth? And that data they have over there is the inputs. I'm very excited that I can actually turn key this information to my staff. By doing math modeling, they're learning the math, and also at the same time, they're going to lessen their mathematics frustration. It seems like this mathematical modeling can fit in even with like the little time we have into every single math classes. I am very excited. I'm gonna bring it back home and um, maybe an advocate for other teachers to um, use math modeling as well. Are you surprised how this introduction played out? What I find so exciting about math modeling from a teaching perspective is that everyone's a natural. In the next video, I'll demonstrate how I walk my class through the modeling process. While there are multiple solutions to one problem, there's one very nice framework that we can use to facilitate student problem solving.